Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Titanic Adventure Out of Time once more. This time, however, all we're doing is the tour mode, hence why this video is significantly shorter than the videos for the main playthrough. So, we're gonna hop back on board the Titanic, we're gonna go visit the 10 tour guides that are positioned around the ship, and they're gonna give us some uh, little tidbits of information. And then we're gonna call it a day. So please, sit back, relax, and enjoy the tour mode of Titanic Adventure Out of Time. So we're back with Titanic Adventure Out of Time to do the tour mode this time. What this is going to entail is, I believe there's 10 tour guides. We're just going to go over to them, talk to them, and they're going to give us a little, little facets of Titanic history. Nothing, nothing serious, nothing crazy, and uh, this should be pretty quick. So, let's get back on board the RMS Titanic. The other purpose of the tour mode is to basically allow you to explore the entire ship without uh, story mode restrictions. I'm just gonna fast travel to each tour guide though so we can uh, hear what they have to say and move on. start here with smuggles and work our way around I guess all right smuggles what do you have to say ah, I was wondering when you'd arrive <laughs> welcome aboard the Titanic thank you I am Smeddles your steward I have a letter for you from Bruce Ismay your host dear honored guest it is my great it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our distinguished company of first-class passengers on the Royal Mail Steamer Titanic's maiden voyage to New York. This historic event, the very height of gracious and civilized travel in the 20th century, promises to be one that we shall all remember for years to come. The White Star Line has made every effort to ensure that your journey will be as luxurious as a sojourn in the finest private home in England, and as pleasurable as a tour of the glittering capitals of Europe. Indeed, the Titanic's amenities are unsurpassed, all nine of our decks are open for the exclusive inspection of the first class passenger, and we invite you to explore at your leisure. You will find a schematic of the vessel here in your stateroom. Have a pleasant vid uh, voyage. Yours sincerely, J. Bruce Ismay, President and Managing Director. The line has instructed me to relay the following information. Like her twin sister, the Olympic, the Titanic was built at the shipyards of Harland and Wolf in Belfast. Harland and Wolf. Construction began in March 1909. At over 46,000 tons, the Titanic is the largest ship in the world. Wow. Triple screw steamer. She has three propellers. This, one of the wing propellers, is 23 feet in diameter. The ship is powered by 29 coal-fired boilers and runs at a top speed of 23 knots. The <laughs> ship is 882 feet, 9 inches long, and 92 and a half feet wide. Stood on end, she would dwarf the great buildings of the world, including the plant's tallest, the 750 foot high Woolworth Building in New York. The Titanic's outfitting was completed in March of this year. After only one day of sea trials, she proceeded directly to Southampton for provisioning and the boarding of her 2,200 passengers and crew. The ship is under the command of Captain E.J. Smith. Was it exactly 2,200 passengers and crew? Look at that. Most recently, he commanded the Olympic for it to be such on an even number. Voyage. We will arrive in New York no later than Thursday, April 18th, and possibly even earlier. The Titanic is your home until then. Please do not fail to avail yourself of the many luxuries and amusements she has to offer. You are now free to explore the ship at your convenience. 
Do you desire additional instructions? Uh, no, I don't need any help. I'm assuming he Very says well. the same thing as he does At in the game time, mode. You may click on the ship symbol below to view the passengers and crew who volunteered to serve as your personal tour guides. Click on their picture. You will go to their onboard location automatically, where they will relay news and information. I trust you'll find it fascinating. If you have an internet browser, new guides will be available periodically on Cyberflix's homepage on the World Wide Web. Our address? www.cyberflix.com Remember, you must first quit the CD-ROM to download new guides. <laughs> I am most certain you will find the internet to be the very latest in modern technology, just like the Titanic. Now, if you'll excuse me, good night. Imagine if somebody in 1912 started talking like that. The World Wide Web in an internet browser. Alright, as he said, we're just going to jump around. So, we're going to do Scotland Road next. Talk to Shayla Hacker. This is the third class area. Are you lost? You know what this reminds me of? Class. The really, discovery tour here. mode in the latest Assassin's Creed games. I'm traveling with my brother, Jack. We're on our way to America and a new life. Jack says we shall have a huge farm in America and a big house as well. It was hard to leave though. Most of my family stayed in Ireland. We may never see them again. On the other hand, perhaps we'll get rich. Maybe someday I'll come home for a visit and travel first class on this very ship. These people are the Benellis. They're in the cabin next to mine. They're Italian and don't speak one word of English. I don't know how they'll survive in America. Perhaps they have relatives in New York. Certainly hope so. It's true. They do have automobiles on board. They're stowed forward here. Just keep exploring. You're sure to find the cargo hold sooner or later. Anyways, yeah, the Discovery Tour mode in uh, more recent Assassin's Creed games is kind of like this, where you like come across uh, NPCs that you uh, encounter in the story mode, but then they're here to like give you this type of information. The aft well deck. Hello. I suppose you know what happened. It was horrible. I barely made it into the lifeboat and onto the Carpathia. There weren't nearly So she did survive. Lifeboats, that is. The freaking really end of the game it until we arrived in seemed New like she died. This is what one of the newspapers reported. At 11:40 p.m. on April 14th, the Titanic hit a huge iceberg. The impact ripped the hull apart at its seams, allowing the Atlantic to flow into the ship's hull. The ship sank at 2.18 a.m. on April 15th, a.m. carrying more than 1,500 people to their graves below the Atlantic. Words don't do it justice. The scene at the dock in New York was amazing. Dead silence as we made our way to the mooring. Then pandemonium. I saw Vincent Astor the Younger. Somehow he'd made his way on board. He found Mrs. Astor. Mr. Astor went down with the ship. They say the White Star office was mobbed with relatives. So many of them were disappointed. Major Butt died. So did Mr. Guggenheim and young Mr. Andrews. Both of the Strausses went down. Mrs. Strauss refused to leave her husband. Perhaps she was wise. Ismay made it onto a lifeboat and now everyone's calling him a coward. I'll never forget it. It looked as if a huge skyscraper was being sucked into the sea. The Titanic is unsinkable. Only God could sink the ship. We won't sink. This is the 20th century. I was lucky to get off alive. I like how they use the uh, same voice actor, but just <laughs> increased the speed of his voice or lowered it. Only God could sink the ship. First class smoking lounge with Eric Burns. Good evening. My name is Hello. Eric Burns. I'm a photographer. Did you get a cigar? Smethels tells me we have 8,000 of them on board. That's These it. are some of my photos. This lady's Molly Brown of Denver. She was a waitress who married that a That looks like Kathy Bates. Rich. 
Once a nobody, she now knows everybody. Uh, this is Bruce Ismay, the president of the White Star Line. He's the second Ismay to join the family firm. He just came along for the ride on this trip. Left his wife back home in England. <laughs> Some days I wish I'd left my wife back home in the States. Well, that's Thomas Andrews, the Titanic's designer. He's along so he can find flaws with the ship's operation and correct them before the return voyage. You'll probably see him everywhere you go. Goodbye. I don't think they would have had time to do anything, though. Had the ship actually uh, made it to New York. I mean, when was it scheduled to return? The gymnasium with Willy von Hedelitz. I see you found the gymnasium. Nothing like staying fit while it's off to the right. That's Mr. Lawrence Beasley and his friends on the mechanical camel and the horses. They're almost like the real thing. And try the rowing machines. With the sea air flowing through the windows, they're very invigorating. When you've done exercising, visit the Cafe Parisian for a bit of relaxation. It's quite pleasant. The boat deck's right outside. That's where they store the lifeboats, just in case. <laughs> Look at the time. I'll see you around. Goodbye. I like how the uh, timeline of this tour makes no sense. Some of them talk about it as if the ship's still here. Some of them talk about it as if it sank. Grand Staircase with Daisy Cashmore. Good evening. I see you found the Grand Staircase. Lovely, isn't it? And of course, you'll see absolutely everyone passing through here on their way to dinner. The Astors themselves just went down. Colonel John Jacob Astor is one of the world's wealthiest men, you know. I hear he's worth more than $107 million. They have one of the most expensive suites on board. Would have been a lot of Their money back then. alone cost more than $4,000. Mrs. Astor, she was Miss Madeline Force of New York, is the Colonel's second wife. They've been married only since September, and they've been touring the continent since. I hear they're already expecting a child. I do hope the voyage isn't too difficult for poor Madeleine. She's only 19, can you imagine? Then there's Izzy, Isidore Strauss. He's a partner in Macy's and Lord and & Taylor in New York. Such lovely emporiums, don't you agree? At Macy's. He was born in Bavaria, but I hear he grew up in Georgia. I hear he even tried to join the Confederate Army. They wouldn't have him. Mrs. Strauss is along as well. Oh, that's Archie Butt. Major Archibald Willingham Butt, I should say. He's returning from a very important mission to the Pope in Rome, and he's carrying a message back to President Taft. But when he's off duty, Archie is such a gay blade. Have him tell you about being sent to the Pacific a with a boatload gay blade? Of he's just too amusing. The page is playing the roast beef of old England. That's the call to dinner. Perhaps we'll see you again later. The bridge with Officer Morrow. Welcome to the bridge. From this room, I have absolute control over this ship. These are the controls for the watertight doors. They connect the boiler and engine rooms below, should any water enter. I can lower them instantly. They're controlled by an electric magnet. We can stay afloat indefinitely with this system. Not that we'll ever need to. We're making quite good time. Our uh, location, uh, let's see. Let's see, not far from Newfoundland. Newfoundland. The wireless operators are in touch with Cape Race, I believe. The wireless room is just astern of the bridge, should you wish to visit. Should I? But I didn't talk about the moon this night. Uh, whoa, what the heck? Wireless room with you. But you were on the bridge. I do hope you aren't planning to send a wireless. I was. We have so many passenger messages, the operators hardly have time for a break. Strictly speaking, the wireless operators are employees of the Marconi Wireless Company. Mr. Marconi invented our system, you know. It's the most Mr. Macaroni. communications device on the high seas. The system operates with this key and a code of dots and dashes. More short and long signals. We're in constant contact with the ships around us in the nearest land stations. In fact, a message is coming in right now. Please come back later. Perhaps we can send your message. Send my message. The boiler room. With unnamed guy. 
Ooh, passengers aren't supposed to be in the boiler room, so watch those furnaces. The captain's ordered full speed ahead. He's significantly nicer this time. We got 29 of these monsters to feed. Each one's got three furnaces. It's kind of a dick when I was playing the uh, main game. Between here and New York. The steam's funneled to the engines that turn the propellers. So the stoker's job's important. But hard. Shoveling coal. Over and over. All the way to America and back. They say the Titanic's the single largest thing to float. I can believe it. All very modern, except for this shoveling, which I've got to get back to. This shoveling. Alright, our last stop, the Turkish bath. The Leyland Sekum Trask. Hello, Leyland Trask is the name. Luxurious, is it not? And excellent for meditation. Do you know anything about time travel? It's curious. I was just reading this book. It was written in 1892, only 14 years ago. But it's weirdly modern. It's about a ship called the Titan, the largest Ooh, ever built. Me. It was supposed to be unsinkable, but in the book, the ship sinks with everyone on board. Gives me the shivers. But the shivers aren't that Give uncommon. The shivers. In line of work visions, predicting the future, that sort of thing. For the past couple of days, though, it's been very odd. I keep seeing newsboys and the word Carpathia. I can't figure it out at all. Good evening. Good evening. I believe that's everybody. We already talked to Smethels. I don't think he's going to say anything different. Well, there you have it. Very quick. That's the tour mode. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully you learned a little more about the history of the ship from our gracious hosts. If you didn't catch my playthrough of the main game, I'd like to invite you to go check it out now. But before you do, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. That way you can follow along as new videos are released. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.